So today we're going to cover the question of when is the right time to put the super onto your beehive. So this is the honey super and this is the brood box. So typically you wait till the brood box is nice and full before putting on the super. Otherwise you'll be waiting a long time, getting really impatient that they're not making honey in your honey box. So um, while, we, while we're covering that, we may as well harvest a little honey as well. So this is what it looks like when your, when your uh, honey super is full of bees and honey. And if you take a look at this side window, you'll notice that this has lots of bees in the, in the, in the super. So when you've got a lot of bees in your super, this is almost too many. This hive could do with a split. You can hardly see the comb inside because there's so many bees. But when you've got that amount of bees, they make a lot of honey quite quickly so it's always this juggle of making sure your hive isn't about to swarm away and they've got enough room but also that you've got enough in your hive to really be producing good honey in your honey super. So while we're here I'm just going to take out that top cap here and this bottom one here put in the little tube like this and that's about all we need to do before we can turn the hand up. Okay. So now I'm just inserting this a little ways and turning it. So now the cells inside the comb have, have uh, turned into channels and that's my father and I's invention. And the honey will start streaming down into that um, tube area shortly. You can just see it there coming down the tube. And I'd be quite interested to taste this flavour. There's been these beautiful caramel smells coming out of the apiary recently and wafting through the office. This hive is, is about uh, 20 metres from the office door. I'm just going to put that in all the way now and give it a turn. I'm going to leave it in that position there just in case there's any cells that are quite stuck and propolis up and it just allows a little bit of time for them to lift. So leaving it in for 30 seconds or so can be a good idea, especially if the frame is really firm to open. This one's quite easy, so I can take that out now if I wanted to, but um, it's a beautiful thing, the honey's flowing out. I'm just going to have to give that a taste. Oh wow, it's not the caramel flavor that's coming in because this frame was capped um, probably before that, that flavor that they're bringing in now. And it's more of a fruity flavor. It's like passion fruits and, mm, it's really quite interesting. What's, what, it's a really beautiful thing to get different flavours in your hive and you'll notice that one frame will have a completely different flavour to another which is something we didn't realise we had enabled through our invention but it's been a wonderful thing, lots of people really enjoying their frame by frame, single frame honeys into their jar and seeing the flavour is just like um, nothing they've tasted before, the floral essences are more retained somehow because the zero processing is literally going frame to jar. So we're going to leave that and come back and um, see how much honey we've got after inspecting another hive to see if it's ready to super. If you've got any questions put them in the comments below and we'll answer them while we're on this call. Now if you're just tuning in what we're covering today is when is your brood box ready for a super. So we're going to wander up here where we've got a uh, a hive that's been somewhat in recovery. It's, um, it lost its queen, but uh, they raised a new one by themselves. If you've been following these lives, you might follow the story of this little hive here. So um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of smoke. You can do it in the entrance, or if you can get underneath the core flute slider or the tray, you can also smoke it from the rear of the hive. So it doesn't need much, because it's only a 
a small colony. So a couple of just gentle puffs will do. Now before I take the lid off the hive, remember to put my hood on. It's a good idea, especially if you're new to beekeeping, to really make sure you protect yourself to minimise the stings. Now that means having a good suit or jacket and uh, making sure you've got long pants on if you're wearing a jacket and having your, your gloves at the ready if you knew wear your gloves as well. This hive is pretty quiet and we know we know that it is so um, I'm probably not going to worry about the gloves so much. Okay so you can see the bees in there which is a good sign. Now I'm just opening up these corners just with my hive tool. This is the tool that comes with our suits and jackets, a very handy beekeeping tool. Because I'm opening directly into the brood nest, I'm just giving a quick check, make sure the queen's not on here. I'd hate to orphan her from the hive. I can't see the queen. So I'm going to just lean this uh, up against the entrance just in case I've missed her so she has a chance to run back in. Now what we're going to do is just go through some of the combs and have a look and see what's on there. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below. So straight away, I'm looking at this and going, look, it's close to, to being ready to put the super on top because I can see the bees have now built out all of these combs in the hive. And the numbers of bees are uh, coming up, which is good. So I'm just going to move this frame sideways now. Sometimes the edge frame when you're doing naturally drawn comb is a little connected to the to the walls, but let's have a look and see just um, how easily this can come out. So inserting your J tool just under the frame, gently coming up, trying not to roll any bees as you lift it. So what you can see here is a nice example of a naturally drawn comb. There's no foundation in this frame. The bees have just made this from the comb guide at the top of the frame, which we supply. Beautiful, beautiful honeycomb. Typically you get honeycomb on the edges. And as you move in, you start to see the pollen stores and brood starting. And uh, in the middle, if your hive's nice and healthy, you should see the bulk of the frames being taken up with brood. So I'll have a look at that as we go in. Beautiful frame. So I'm just going to put that one aside, leaning up against the hive too, so if the queen is on that frame, she could run back in to the hive. Taking out another frame, just gently coming up. There we go. So with naturally drawn comb, it's a good idea not to give it too much of a tilt just in case it it um, falls. Now there's some interesting things going on in this frame. We can see a queen cup right here. So that queen cup hasn't, um, the, a queen hasn't hatched out of that because you can tell by the way the edge is nice and smooth. If it was ripped and torn at the edge, it would have been one that a queen had hatched out of. Now if I have a look down there, out of interest, I'll just have a look and see whether there's a grub in there. No, it's just an empty queen cup. They often do that just in case they might need to use it. Okay, now I can actually move the frame aside. Glenn says he just supered his hive last week. Okay. Fantastic, Glenn. That's, that's good news. So if you've got lots of bees in the brood box, you want to see lots of bees before putting the super on. You can, if it's a warm climate, you can put it on early, but you'll just be waiting longer, which sometimes is a patience game and can often get a little impatient. But here we can see a lot of nice brood starting. So we're getting towards 
the centre of the brood box and we're looking at beautiful brood in this area. So you can see that more uh, brownish capping that's a bit less see-through. The honey, you can see through a little bit more into the colour of the honey and there you can't because they've got a silk uh, lining on their brood. So that's really nice. There's a little bit of nectar over here that they'll probably move aside to make way for more brood as they really build up. How long does it usually take for bees to fill a brood box? More nice brood on that side. So it really does depend and it also depends how you've started. So if you've just started with two frames from another hive and, and a queen, or then it could take quite a while before they really build up their stores and build up their hive in order to fill out the box. And it also depends on the season, of course, whether there's plenty of forage around. They need nectar and pollen to raise their brood. Pollen is their protein and nectar is their carbohydrate. And they'll typically take a frame full of, of, of honey and a frame full of pollen to raise one frame of brood. So it gives you an idea of what they need to bring in. So that process is all a balance depending on the strength of your hive and, and what's around. So if you've got a, a starting with a strong colony, let's say you've, you've caught a big swarm, which we've got plenty of videos of, you've shaken it into the box. Sometimes it's really exciting how fast they, they build up and they can fill out all the frames in, in as quick as a few days, which is quite extreme and then they start laying and away they go. But equally you can have a new hive that, that really um, doesn't grow very quickly and months and months go by. If you've got a hive that's really not growing but other hives are, then you may need to change the genetics of, of the hive by introducing a new queen. So, so that's a, uh, a long answer but it really does depend on whether you've got a virile queen, a colony big enough to bring in the forage and the forage around. So keep the questions coming in. Also let us know what you'd like us to cover next week. We're here to answer your questions and help you get started with your beekeeping. Another frame. Just going to pull that up gently and see what's on it. I notice I haven't got my gloves on. I do need to be more careful where I put my fingers. Because if I squash a bee, it will sting me. So there, you can see a bit of a, bit of a mix of some brood around the edges and some honey in the middle. So I'm also keeping a lookout for any signs of anything amiss. If you had sunken cappings with pinholes in them, then that could be a sign of the AFB, which is a um, really nasty thing to get in your hive. Okay, looking at the other side. So this looks like a frame we inserted. I can tell by the color actually. We inserted it from another hive when the hive went queenless, but um, we didn't need to because we could tell that they actually raised their own queen by the way they hatched off another frame. So let's have a look at one more. Got any questions? Put them in the comments. We do. Um, Kerwin says it's a waste of money, it's a gadget. What can you say to that? I assume they're talking about the um, flow hive. Yes. So the, we have tens of thousands, 60,000 customers around the globe now and so many beautiful amazing stories of people getting their hive and really enjoying harvesting their honey in, in this new way that we've invented. So it's really up to you and I guess whatever way you want to keep bees is wonderful if you want to go and uh, keep them in a completely different way that's fine, really support you to do that. What we've invented is a system that allows you to 
harvest the honey directly from the hive in a way that was never possible before. And the benefits of that are quite vast. You can really leave the bee colony to do their own thing in the process of, of harvesting. And it's also opened up a nice experience where you can, you can enjoy with your friends and family that process of the honey coming out which wasn't possible before. And also the um, isolation of flavours is, is one that's easy to do now with the flow hive. You can see the different colours and you can tap them off into the jar. And then we've got customers who tell us they've paid off their hive in, in the first season which is a beautiful thing to hear. But of course it does really depend on whether, you've, uh, wh whether you get a good season or not like any type, type of farming. So um, it's up to you, of course, but, but there's many benefits to the system we've invented and I hope that um, you, you check it out at some stage to have a look for yourself. Okay, here's another beautiful frame of brood. So this hive is getting very close. We could put the super on. Perhaps we'll do that next week so we can show you how to do that. Plenty of bees um, and a, a lot of brood. It's not completely packed yet, but in another week a lot more bees will have hatched out. The time to put it on is when all the frames are filled out and there's lots of bees when you, when you open the lid. Here's a, here's a waggle dance going on here, which is a beautiful thing. So the dance it's doing there, I thought it was doing the um, figure of eight dance but yep there it goes again. So it's doing a figure of eight pattern. Well it was. It's extraordinary. Bees through the dance can tell such accurate information of where the flowers are, how far away they are, and much more that we don't understand, I'm sure. And after a while, you can tune in and, and watch the bees and actually learn if, the, if they've got a, um, this one's doing quite a, quite a long waggle. And um, it could be for another reason. Sometimes they waggle just for, for saying, come and groom me. Other times they're waggling to transfer some information. But if they waggle for one second, that's about a kilometre away is, is the nectar, nectar or, or pollen source. And then the, um, the direction is determined by the shape of the dance and the angle to vertical. Such a fascinating world to, to check out. So it's... Um, just beautiful and if you don't learn something new every time you look in your hive then you're not looking hard enough so it's this this beautiful journey of, of learning and that learning never stops Cedar Sean would like to know what happens if you introduce a new queen but there happens to be the old queen still in the hive okay typically the, your new queen will be killed by the hive so if you are introducing a new queen, you're, you're doing that into a hive that doesn't have a queen. Um, it, so if you've mistaken you have, and, you, and you thought they didn't have a queen but they have, then a new queen will probably get killed by the hive. Okay, if you've got any more questions, keep putting them in the comments below. I'm just lifting up the... Um, Next frame here, and that beautiful caramel smell is wafting through the apiary. It's, it's um, a flavour I'm really looking forward to, to trying. More beautiful brood, so there's also some pollen around this area. You can see the oranges and the beige colours of the pollen they're bringing in down the cells and fermenting into their, into their bee bread. So pollen the protein source and they, they like it fermented like a good sourdough. That helps them digest it. 
Jacqueline would like to know how do you make sure the bees have adequate for, for themselves? Okay, now it depends a bit on your area and it's a good idea to find that out from local beekeepers. Around here there's typically through the winter and the summer enough flowers around for the bees to get by so there isn't so much that concern taking too much honey away. However if you go to an area where um, it, it's typically in a colder climate where you've got a long cold winter and you really do need to make sure there's enough honey stores in the hive for the bees to survive through that winter time. So that does depend. Some people will say um, you'll need a full box of honey to survive the winter. In some more extreme places you need two boxes of honey to survive the winter. So um, if you live in an area though and you know there's flowers coming up then you can continue to take honey. Another nice benefit of the flow hive is you can tap just a single frame of honey and get enough honey to take back for your family and, and leave the rest for the bees if you're not sure. Or you can even take a, a quarter of a frame. It's really up to you. But um, the idea is to, um, to make sure your bees are happy and healthy. So if you're unsure, just take a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put the hive back together. If you've got any more questions, put them in the comments below. This is ready for a super, so next week we'll show you how to do that if you want to tune in at the same time. And what I'm doing is just pushing the frames back together just slowly and gently so I don't squash any bees. And respecting that natural order of the combs, if you can put them in the same order they came out in, it's better for a few reasons. One is you don't want the wax of one comb pressing into the other and creating an area where the bees can't service. It's when opportunists like hive beetles can, can take over if there's an area where the bees can't patrol them. It takes them a little while to, to chew it all the way again. Okay. Ibrahim is doing urban beekeeping and is wondering what plants should he plant for warm weather so that there is many flowers blooming through the season. Okay, so there, you do need to plant um, quite a lot in order, the bees typically forage in a two kilometre radius and they do need a lot of plants. However, if you've got a big property, you can plant enough to, um, to, to really change what the bees are bringing in. There's a beautiful property near here where, where the owner has planted all sorts of medicinal plants for the bees and is getting really interesting honeys from that. So that, that's a nice thing to do. If you've got a smaller property, then planting some forage will help a tiny bit, but it does help in the bigger picture regardless for, for all sorts of forages to come in. Lots of native bees, there's, there's, uh, there's 20,000 of them in the world and they all need flowers and, and, and stepping stones to get through our urban landscape. So planting flowers in suburbia is a wonderful thing to do. If lots of people are planting, then there's enough for our honeybees and also enough for our for our native um, pollinators, which our world completely depends on. So um, as to what type, you'll have to look up for your area what will grow well. But people do say um, bees really go for the, the purple coloured flowers, like the lavenders and things like that, which are a nice thing to watch the bees foraging on in your garden. Okay, I'm just dropping this last frame back in. and just not quite enough room to put it back. So I'm going to need to squash up these frames a little bit just by putting my hive tool. And I'm gonna leave it down low so the tilt of the frame comes back into line. Squashing them back up to where they were so there's enough room for this frame to slide down and back in. There we go, that's better. Mike would like to know, what do you do when you have two frames joined together by honeycomb? Okay, so that can happen with naturally drawn comb. It can happen with, with foundation as well, but more likely with the naturally drawn comb. So the idea is to, to, to cut it back and um, get it back in line as best you can, and hopefully they'll follow suit with a straight comb next time. 
We've got some videos on how to do that. If you um, if you look that up, perhaps Leah can put one in the in the comments below later. Um, so what you're trying to do is just get them back into a straight line. Now, if they've made a real mess, what you might need to do is put them near the edge of the hive, make sure any brood that's in the in the um, comb hatches, pull those frames out that are stuck together, and eat the honeycomb and put them back in again. So. So if they're really a mess, then there's a few ways to go. You can either do that or, um, or cut some pieces out that have brood in it and rubber band them back in, or um, some satay sticks through the sides of the frame in those little holes can also be a good way to hold some, um, some comb that's been cut back into the frame. So there's a few ideas there if it gets really messy. Um, but the idea is once you put a little bit of effort into making sure they're going straight, they'll then follow suit after that. So I'm um, just gonna brush these bees off and put our lid back on. So just gently um, finding its place. Okay, now um, let's have a look at our jar of honey we harvested earlier. If you're just tuning in, at the start of the video we turn the handle on this frame here. And now you can see this beautiful jar of honey. And that's um, just amazing to see. There's so much honey that comes out of a single frame. So you get six of these big jars out of this box, which is is beautiful and it's totally ready for the table. There is no more filtration or no more processing that needs to happen. It's beautiful, fresh, raw honey ready for the table. And you can see that <laughs> this jar is the people's honey. So this jar usually lives um, on our bench for people to have on their toast and in their teas and so on. So it's about time we topped it up. Tune in again next week and we'll show you how to put a super onto your brood box. Thanks very much for watching.